Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Angel Bobs. Today's episode I'm going to talk about um, some of the um, improvements I've made in since the last one and this has mostly been sort of improvements of scale should we say. So one of the big things I've done is I've improved my um, construction and logistics robots um, building. So beforehand we just had the um, the red ones being built so those are level two. We've got level ones being made here, level two here so I've now got it making level 3 um, and level 4, here we go, the purple ones, and then level 5, which is basically level 4 but with a, um, a nuclear power plant. And they were they were relatively straightforward. They, um, they just required lots and lots of things that I've already got. I just had to get them into the right places. So, for example, the, um, the, the level 3 ones required batteries and titanium <coughs> and blue circuits. Level 4 required another sort of battery, um, silver zinc batteries, and um, nitinol, and oh yeah, this this was a little bit awkward. I had to bring in um, silicon nitrite from somewhere, nitrate, sorry, and also the um, uh, these things, whatever this was, uh, silicon, no, tungsten carbide, there we go. So those are a little bit tricky, but as you can see, I've managed to basically wind, wind these belts through here with a lot of, a lot of faffing and a lot of swearing. And we've got all the rest of the stuff being delivered up here. The main limiting factor on these at the moment is the, um, the radio thermoelectric generators that I'm making. I'm making those down here for the rocket, but uh, from all these machines. But they're not being they're not being made in particularly large quantities because this is a bit of a no. Sorry, this step up here is a bit of a limiting limiting uh, factor at the moment. It's not making them as fast as fast as I really need them, need it to. So they're coming they're coming through at a bit of a a bit of a slow dribble, should we say? Still, they are coming through. There's look at the right end. There's about 1.6 thousand here, so it's probably I might I think I'm going to send a train over to pick those up manually because it's never it doesn't get up to a high enough quantity of them to, for it to be um, practical to wait for it to get up to 10,000. So let's pick up. Wait there for time. 30 seconds is fine, and then go up to the top and drop them off here until empty. <coughs> so. The uh, train will go and, and do that as, as is there as is the way. Next thing was um, I needed. I, I realised that I was running very low on rocket fuel. I didn't have any. It wasn't that was the limiting factor for my getting rockets launched. Um, I've now got quite a lot of it coming through, as you can see here. Uh, that was being limited by the amount of ammonia that was coming in. So one of the steps up here somewhere was limited by ammonia. So that's now going quite well, as you can see. And the reason that's going quite well is because I've come and I've put in another. I think that's. Yes, I've tripled the uh, the number of these machines that are producing the ammonia. Now they're rather limited by how fast I can produce the um, the precursors for them. So we've got an extra bank of um, machines making the nitrogen. I think is it nitrogen that we're short of? Yes, nitrogen is the uh, limiting factor at the moment. So I should probably put in another column of this stuff. In fact, I can do that. It's really handy just being able to copy and paste stuff like this. <laughs> Now you can see the wonder of my um, faster bots. See it there. Now there are two, two major advantages to these green robots. One is the fact they move so much faster, as you might be able to tell. I don't know whether you can remember from the previous ones. But the other thing is they don't need to recharge themselves, um, so because they've got their built-in nuclear power plants, so they can just fly all the way from one side of the map to the other without needing to stop, which makes them that makes a massive difference. So they're just fly, happily flying all the way over here, and then there's some more coming up here to do the actual building. So that's got me um, a decent amount of ammonia coming through. Uh, these tanks are almost full. The other thing I did as part of this was I took, is it this train? Yes, I, I've told this train to shuttle back and forth between ammonia pickup and ammonia rocket drop uh, because those that was the place that was using the most ammonia and, and having them go back to the depot every single time just it didn't seem to be getting enough through so I've, um, I've, 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 I've got one dedicated train now just running up and down there. But of course It'll it'll stop and sit in the um, in the uh, rocket rocket factory uh, once the um, once the tanks down there are full, so that'll keep it out of the way when it's not needed. So the next thing I've done, I was um, because of all the modules I've been shoving in the um, 
in the various buildings I've got. Now you'll notice that yes, they do cause a, a productivity boost of 40%, but they also have an energy boost of um, 80%. So that means when I go through and I put four of these in a um, in a construction in an assembly machine, I'm increasing the um, by the amount of energy they use by more than three times over. Um, so because of that, I was starting to run out of power. In order to sort that out, I've got this massive bank of solar being built up here. Now this has taken a long time to get even to the state of construction it's at at the moment um, because solar panels are being built way over here so it takes forever to fly them over but more importantly they're being built from basically a single yellow belt's worth of, um, of electric, sorry, electronic circuits which has also run out it turns out so I'm going to need to have a look into that. <clears throat> I wonder if that's because there's a glitch in the uh, train system or whether it's because my... let's see... No, there's only 4,000 here. So so it's because I'm not building these electronic circuits fast enough at the moment. <laughs> that's a shame. Um, and that's because these belts are all too slow. That's why. Okay, well, that's that's something I can go in and, and improve relatively easily with the, um, with the old upgrade planners. So if I come in here and I just upgrade this entire thing... Uh, not that one. And upgrade all of this to green... Well, that's only going to double the amount of I'm producing because it's uh, going to be limited by how much I can, how much wire I can flow through on this belt. Um, but that is going to, it is still going to be a doubling. And then if I go down here as well, and then stick uh, productivity modules in all of those machines, then that'll be an enormous boost to the to how fast it runs. Uh, don't go there. Go there instead. It's getting to the point where there's so many trains that are on the uh, network that occasionally I have to slow down to avoid them. Right, let's go up here. The bus is really noisy. So when I get to here, I can then shove in these all the way along there. And that will now multiply the production, production of these circuits by about two and a half times. And that has now, as you can see, is completely filling up the bus, the uh, belt. So that means I need to come in and speed this up as well. Might work as well. There we go. <laughs> I love it when you get a massive flood of bots in like that to do um, to do your bidding. Let's just do this map mode. Map mode mode. I feel that my um, construction and all, all of my and my uh, and my um, belt building up here is now is, is robust enough that I can just upgrade the whole lot all the way from yellow to, to green without needing to worry too much about um, exactly what I've about faffing around with in, intermediate levels so here you can see the um, the bots are dropping off the yellow belts that I've just upgraded and then there should be another oops, there's, a, there's a red one so that's notice how much slower that one's going so that one hasn't been captured yet <coughs> One of the slightly tricky things... Oh, and here are some red bots doing the um, the upgrade. One of the slightly tricky things i found about upgrading bots is, is, is working out how to capture them and, and in order to um, shove them back in, for, to, to remove them from, the, from use and then get them upgraded. So what I've done is, on a strategic few of the, um, the robo-ports, what I've done is I've put in these filter inserters that are pulling out any Mark 1 or Mark 2 robots and dumping them in a provider chest. And then over here, no, over here, I've got some requester chests that are pulling, that are getting them back off the network. Um, now that kind of works because any 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 robots any robots that land in these robot ports will be pulled out and and then replaced um, and put where they where they should be and in order to be upgraded. The problem is a lot of unless. The chance of them actually landing in those robot ports are fairly small because there's a fairly there's a pretty good chance they'll go off and do something else somewhere else, like up here for example. So no, not that one, that one. Yeah, well, there's only six in here, but I can grab those out and I've got it set up so that it automatically dumps them into my trash slots, meaning that then um, logistics bots will fly over like this, grab them from me, and take them down off to be upgraded. So that 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 is working quite nicely. It's just a bit of a pain trying to find all of the um, the red bots. And the thing is, I know that I've built literally thousands of them. If I look at here, there's um, 800 logistics bots from there, 1,200 from there, so 2,000 logistics bots, and about 2,400 um, construction bots. 
If we look over here, now granted, quite a lot of them are in this queue, either here or in the uh, in the red chests here. So actually, oh, actually, that's done pretty well. There's 1,800 of them in this chest, and and these have made another 300. Five. That's, that's about six. Call it be 500, 550 or so. So actually, that does look like most of them have been pulled out of circulation. So I'm now a bit limited on how many um, how many bots I've got. <laughs> this, um, but that will gradually um, gradually increase over time as we um, as we as we uh, build build more of them. The limiting factor is very much these radio thermoelectric generators, but there's quite a lot of them on the um, on the belt now. So hopefully this will chug through for a while and we'll get a decent number of bots created. Right, so that's the bots, the ammonia, uh, and the solar, yes. And I've also I've also been faffing around with transistors a bit. That was the next thing I was going to talk about. So a lot of a lot of my um, circuits and other production things use massive quantities of transistors, and we've run out. So this this belt here should be full of transistors. Um, why is this stopped? Oh, it's run out of whatever this one is. Okay. So there's been a, there's another thing I've got a shortage of. I wonder why I've got a shortage of transistors. It's whatever this one is, which is okay. I've run out of copper. Yeah, I've been having problems with copper recently. That's uh, going to be something to look at soon. But yeah, there's just not very much being fed through here. These should be basically full, but for some reason these machines seem to be running. These these machines seem to be the bottleneck, and I don't really know why because I'm sure this is all fairly balanced before. So I'm going to need to come in and have a look at those. So that's on my to-do list. Um, but what I was going to say... In fact, I'll talk about the transistors next time when it's actually working. <laughs> so we'll forget about that for now. The final thing in, for this episode is going back down to the rocket launching. So I've been launching satellites up until now. And I've got, from, from doing that, I've got a huge quantity here of the, um, of the, of the space science. 70,000. So that's going to keep me going for a good long time. So it's now time to start thinking about the space expansion module, or space ex space extension, whatever it's called. So I look at look, look at this up here, and this tells me that I've launched more than seven satellites. Well, I've launched 154, so that's fine. That's got me my satellite network up. So the next thing I need to work on is getting a dry dock built, which takes ten ten of these um, dry dock components and then two of the assembly components. So I've got this machine here that's building the easy ones, and that just requires massive quantities of low-density structures, so that's quite straightforward. Here we go, here's my um, rocket about to lob another one up into space. As you can tell, my um, system for launching rockets is now quite quite smooth, everything just, it just works. I can, I can ignore it, and or mostly ignore it, and it will just work, and, and all the rockets will launch happily. Here it goes. Whoosh. Off into space. Right, so as I was saying before I was um, distracted, this is building up the um, dry dock structure components. The assembly components are a bit more complicated, unfortunately. Um, that's this one? Yes. So th there's nothing here. Actually, it's not quite true. There's a couple of things here I don't have. I don't think I've got up to RoboPort 4 yet, um, and I haven't built large solar panel 3, but I don't expect either of those to be particularly difficult. I've got the processing board, um, and I've got low-density structures. So what I'm probably going to do is stick a requester chest down here and just have it summon in all of the things I need to build up one of these, and then get those launched as quickly as possible. Uh, let's have a look. Solar 3. Yeah, this is all manageable glass is slightly fiddly but basically all of this is doable i just need to set it up somewhere up to produce it um robot for this is going to be this is going to be fiddly uh robo ports are quite fiddly to make i found this is why i'm only on still only on robo port two i think uh one two yes i'm, I'm only on robo port two because there are to be honest, they're a faff. You have to make one, two, three, four different structures, and then make the uh, the robot board itself. I'm mean, actually, to be honest, the, it's the same is true for the, the flying robots themselves. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably, 
well I obviously I'll, I'll build them up I need I need to for the for that next stage uh, we'll see if I can fit them in across here and whether any of the stuff they need is there's there's a decent amount of overlap with what's coming in up here something's run out here what's this oh it's transistors okay we know about that okay so that's where I'm going at the moment I've um, the, the dry dock structure components aren't a problem. They're getting built quite happily and launched. I'm more than halfway through those. And the assembly components, they're going to be a little bit of a headache. But, yeah, they're manageable. I'll get, I'll get those done for the next episode. Um, and I'll show you what that's like next time. Thank you for watching. I'll see you then when we're going to talk about um, better roboports and uh, better solar. See you then.